Hi there! So today I'm going to show you how to build a monthly income portfolio from European dividend growth stocks. In the community you will typically find various examples where people have been building a portfolio which is generating monthly income based from dividend stocks but that's mainly a US based portfolio. What I would like to show to you today is an alternative but then based on European dividend growth stocks. So why is this actually important to me? Well it's actually simple. Mostly European dividend stocks they pay like once a year somewhere in April or May, which means that you don't have an evenly distributed cash flow. This is an issue to me. My goal is to early retire. And in that case, I really would love to have a more evenly distributed cash flow coming in, for instance, on a monthly basis. At the same time, it gives me less currency risk because if I'm heavily driven based on US dollars, it, I'm more exposed to any fluctuation in the portfolio value. Also, when it comes to dividend income compared to when I would be having my majority of my portfolio in euros. And that's my eventual goal. Building such a portfolio isn't easy, but it's possible. Okay, there are less companies to choose for, but I think I can still show you quite a diversified portfolio. Hey, but before we start, by the way, if you want to see more of such content about European dividend growth stocks, please hit the like button or subscribe to my channel and you will automatically get notified about any upcoming videos because in the upcoming future I would love to post more videos about some of those companies that I will be talking about today. So how to create such a portfolio then? Well as you can imagine the most important uh, information that we need is actually which are the companies in Europe that are listed with a proper market cap that pay dividends on a, at least a yearly basis with the intention to grow or at least maintain the same level. Well. Luckily here, there are already some sources on the internet that we can just start off from. So let's have a look on those. One of the first sources that you could really go to is the Dividend Investing Resource Center, dripinvesting.org. This is, uh, nah, actually, if you don't know it yet, have a look, let's say. This is in the community very well known. It's a, it's a broad knowledge base on probably almost everything about dividend reinvesting and something that I pursue as a European dividend grow, growth investor. It has links to articles, books, uh, and also uh, in this tool sections to the dividend champions list, the U famous US dividend champions list, which many dividend investors use as a source of information to do their analysis. The good thing is, and that's what we need, it also has a section about European dividend champions. You will see two sections here. And the one that I will be using is the European dividend champions list, because this is uh, a list with all the Eurozone companies that have been at least maintaining or increasing their uh, dividend payout um, over time. Um, the other list, uh, just for your information, is a little bit limited because it has only 40 companies in there. And I think this is about 150 to 200 companies listed. So if you would uh, download it, and in this case, I've translated the Excel already into a G sheet, you will see that the, um, the list contains both uh, companies paying in euros, Swiss francs, uh, Danish crowns, and, 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 and the Swedish currency. Uh, as an example, if you look at Novartis here, Novartis is in the healthcare sec uh, uh, sector. Uh, pays their dividend yearly. Uh, usually they go ex dividend date in the month Mar March, like, like last year. And they have a dividend streak, growth streak of 19 years at the moment, at least maintained or increased. Well, what you find more in this list, which I really like, is that you see some price related information, but also the fundamentals. So uh, you see the dividend per share, um, the current PE. Um, but you also see their growth rates, the dividend growth rates over time. Uh, it also gives some valuation um, uh, statistics like the Chowder rule. Uh, maybe I'll come back to that uh, at another time in another video. Uh, but also the earnings per share, dividend per share. And you will see how the dividend performance was over time. So this is a really great list to start off with. But it has one thing missing for me. And these are British companies because we have also a lot of dividend uh, growing companies and with such an history. For that, there is another website available. It's called the Dividend Champions UK. And if you go to the homepage, uh, you'll be able to see uh, which companies there exist already with, 20, with a 25 year dividend growth streak, but it also shows company with 10 to 24, 20, 10 to 24 years. 
and some of these companies you will probably recognize. So I use this sheet uh, uh, that I just showed you from the European Dividend uh, Champions plus the UK uh, Dividend Champions list. I use those both as input to uh, start building my own portfolio uh, focused on a monthly income. So let's have a look at the portfolio with all these European dividend stocks that I've prepared today. The portfolio that I'm showing you now is a portfolio consisting of approximately 26 companies. The selection criteria that I've been using is that they shouldn't have a payout ratio typically higher than 75%. I'll show you later what the actuals are because not every company complies to that. At the second, uh, same time, I wanted them to have a dividend growth streak, which is at least proving that it didn't cut the dividend during the last financial crisis back in 2007 and 2008, 2009. And I want them to be distributed uh, according to different months so that I will get approximately an equal payment every month. And the goal here was to compile a portfolio that would have approximately 1000 euro a month of income. So there's a wide diversity of companies in this list. You can see companies like Novartis, Rush Holding, Bayer. You might know them as being part of the pharmaceutical industry. But there are also some lesser known companies maybe. Group Russell Lambert, Munich Reich, Reichsversicherung. Munich RE is an insurance company, quite well known in Germany and has a long lasting dividend growth uh, investing history. But there are also companies like Koninklijke Ahold, Castellum, Unilever. So it's really a wide diversity of companies from different countries. As you can see, some are from Switzerland, some are from Germany, some are from France, some are from Italy, some are from the Netherlands. I would say it's pretty diverse, diversified when it comes to companies. You can also see that it's having several currencies in there, but the majority is in euros. Now, having said that, how does it look then? Look like then? If you look at now the current distribution here in the in the monthly payouts, you can see that the, it is quite difficult to get a monthly payout, but I think I pretty succeeded in it. The most important factor was is to rule out many of the companies that pay in April and May because there are a lot of them so some of those companies I just had to drop but if you go back to the data actually it was quite natural because a lot of those companies didn't even fit the, fit the criteria that I early, earlier mentioned. Now, how does it look like then if you look at these companies and by the way I will share the link to this port model portfolio to you under in the comment under the section in the description of this YouTube video. So you can have a look at it yourself as well. Now, as you can see, on average, uh, my conclusion is based on this portfolio that uh, I'm getting approximately 3000 euros per quarter, but it was not possible to fully have it distributed as 1000 euros a month, which you can see in January, which is in general a light month when it comes to payment. I am collecting 810 euros, 1000 euros and then 1300 euros. So if I would like if I would have to live off this from retirement, I would be pretty able to do that because as you can see and it is a, a regularly even distribution with payments. I think the main one is to in July. That's where you get a big payday and then you then in this case I would need to uh, be a little bit more conscious of the money that I have in hand for the upcoming 2 months because there I will get a little bit less money distributed. Uh, later in the year, it's pretty fine again. You see a lot, a lot of money coming in, 3,200 euros, which I can then also again consume a little bit from in January. So I would say overall, this is giving me a pretty regular income per month based on a wide range, wide variance of companies, 26 in total. If you now look at some of the statistics here, so you can see how much dividend every company would pay me on a yearly basis, what the average yields are and their dividend growth streak. So if you think about it, the crisis was like 10 years ago. There are not many companies in here. I think I count one or two, 11, 10. There are two companies in here that didn't prove that they had a dividend growth streak during the recession. It might be that they have a cut it at the time. Further analysis would, would need to tell me that. At the same time, you can see that the PE ratios are pretty okay. Some might be a little bit higher, but in general, you can see that also the payout radio ratios are pretty fine. And this is important for me because 
if there's an earnings recession that they have to cut down on earnings, for instance, for 20 to 30 person, I would love to see that there is enough, uh, I said, room for uh, still paying out the dividend. This is the case for most of the companies now. You will see here one outlier. This is because it's, it's a real estate investment trust. And there we look rather at the fund distribution. So other metrics apply here. Looking at this company, looking at this portfolio and these companies, I would not advise to just go on and buy now. Every individual company requires your own research. This is just an example of how such a portfolio could look like. The good news is in the upcoming weeks and months, I will pick out some of these companies here that I really would like to further analyze and let you know what their fair value estimate is according to me and whether they're buying worthy at the time. If you have any preference, of course, let me know because I will start analyzing them. Uh, and a specific, specifically, if I know that you have a interest in seeing some of those companies being addressed as early as possible, then just let me know, know and I'll give them priority. Having said that, let's also look at some of the other analysis of this portfolio because I think it's really important for you to know so that you can really judge whether you actually feel comfortable with such a portfolio. So if you look at the healthcare or let's say the industry distribution, you will see that consumer de defensive healthcare. So think about community consumer defensive as companies like Unilever and such. This typical staple companies, which will do well in most of the recessions, right? Because people will need to buy food and will need to have these basics things, diapers, toilet paper. These are typically the companies here. Healthcare is a big one, utilities, uh, also some financials like the insurance company that I just showed you from Munich RE, industrials, energy, and real estate. So for me, this is a pretty de defensive portfolio, having healthcare as well in here, because healthcare, I think, will be only more and more important to European society with a population that's only getting older. Utilities typically give a pretty steady income, uh, not a lot of fluctuation depending on economic uh, circumstances. So I think this is a pretty conservative and defensive uh, portfolio. The same applies then when you look at it from an, uh, I would say it from a dividend point of view, you can see here the average dividend yield per industry sector here. Ah, and before I mention, before I forget it, the total portfolio size, by the way, will be 340,000 euro. So 340,000 euro will give you approximately 12,000 euro of dividend income based on the current market conditions in January 2020. So this is it from a, let's say from a portfolio point of view of industry distribution, how the dividend and how the portfolio size looks like. If you look at it from a currency point of view, I also checked that because I would like to have the majority of my portfolio, of course, in euros so that I mitigate too many fluctuations in the currency. As you can see, 60% of this portfolio would be based on euros. And the second one biggest would be the, the British pound. So you would have approximately 18 to 20% risk in, in British pound. For me, this is acceptable knowing that we live in Europe and it's really hard to get a 100% complete portfolio purely in euros. And honestly, I also want to be a little bit exposed to other companies in Europe. From a dividend income point of view, 70% would be in euros, so that looks even better. So only one third of the portfolio would be subject to currency risk from other, from other currencies. How does it then look from a company point of view? If you look from a company point of view, you can see as well in the top 10 of companies, there's quite a diversity still in within the industries. The top 10 together would give you already quite let's say it here from a position size the top 10 together would give you a total uh, position portfolio size of 43 percent so the weight is definitely in the top 10 and from a dividend income point of view you'll see that the sum is around 60 percent so 10 companies are paying you 60 percent of the dividend income for me that's okay i try to have a single company not be pay not not be paying more than 10 percent of the total dividend from the whole portfolio and i think i pretty succeeded in that 
you can see that there is room to uh, spend a little bit more on other companies. But if you know the uh, typical theory about diversif diversification, then they usually say that after 10 companies, the incremental company that you add doesn't really add too much anymore to the diversification. So I feel pretty okay with this one. And the other companies mainly help me also with equally distributing the payouts in the given months, like from January to December. So this is also a pretty uh, good, good overview for me, something that I would feel comfortable with. This is it for today. Thank you for watching. By now you should have a pretty good idea of how you can compose a portfolio of European dividend growth stocks to allow you yourself to receive income from those dividend stocks based on a monthly basis. If you want to look a little bit further in the information that I've provided to you, I will provide the links in the description of this video, both to the G sheet that I've been presenting today and to the dividend investment resource website. And at the same time, I will, in the upcoming videos, focus on some of those companies to do a little bit of a deeper analysis to establish their fair value and to judge whether I would personally like to own them today based on that valuation. If you have any preference for a company to analyze first, let me know. I might give that one then priority in the upcoming videos. Having said that, if you enjoyed this video and you would like to see more of it, please like or subscribe to my channel. It will boost my motivation to spend the time and to create more of those videos. Personally, I have a lot of passion for it, but it will even motivate me more if I see that others find it very useful. Thank you and see you next time. Bye.